I've been farming on this property for two years. Day to day, sometimes like we're just head to the ground, just going. But you know, you look up and we've got the bluffs and we're so close to the river. It's, we live in a beautiful place. When you think about Wisconsin, think about all of the natural beauty, the clean water, but uh, here people rely on water services uh, to bring in clean water or they go into town to the store to get clean water. You know, it, it seems like that shouldn't be something that we are required to do uh, in order to have clean, safe drinking water. More than two-thirds of Wisconsin residents use groundwater as their drinking water source through private wells or public water systems. But for many Wisconsinites, their groundwater is being contaminated with high levels of nitrates, limiting their access to clean drinking water and putting their health at risk. When Stephen Shoemaker and Elizabeth Minnick bought their farm in southwestern Wisconsin, they were told their well had nitrate levels over 20 parts per million. The maximum contaminant level in Wisconsin is 10. Moving to this farm was really the first experience of, um, oh, this is actually impacting me. It's uh, something I have to think about every day um, and be aware of. So it was a weird thing because it, you take for granted uh, water. It's like you don't think about it and then all of a sudden when you do have to think about it, it's um, a little unsettling. They spent thousands of dollars to dig a deeper well to get clean water for their organic vegetable farm, but they aren't able to use that water in their house yet. Last year, we spent so much money on that well. We can't, haven't been able to afford to bring clean water into the house. Um, so we are just using, we've got the one reverse osmosis system underneath the sink, and that's the one spot where we have clean water in the house. Obviously, the health of our baby is the most important thing. It's one more thing that you have to, to worry about. You know, when we give her a bath, I'm making sure that the bath water level isn't too high so it doesn't get into her mouth. And I don't know, it just seems like things that we shouldn't have to think about. I heard about you shouldn't drink water with over 10 uh, nitrates, but I thought it was only for babies, the, the blue baby syndrome. So ours was tested in 2012 and it showed 18, but we didn't realize it was a problem for us, so we just continued to consume it. Well, I wish I had known it. I, I would have changed, you know, I'd put in a system much earlier. Who knows what it did to our health possibly, but you can't go back. What are they going to, look at my house. What, what's going to happen when I can no longer afford to live here and I want to move? Who's going to want to buy this with the water contamination? I wouldn't buy it. In-home solutions to address this problem are not, are not cheap. They cost a lot of money to put in a new well or to put in a treatment device and even to drink bottled water over periods of time. So the issue is if we get too high of a level of nitrate, then we can start having health effects. So these short-term effects are effects on babies, so that blue baby syndrome, and effects on women who are or may become pregnant, potential for an increased risk of birth defects. But there are also these long-term health effects that can affect everyone, um, and those are increased risk of thyroid disease and increased risk of colon cancer. So we want everyone to, to you know, pay attention to nitrate and make sure that they're not drinking high levels of nitrate for long periods of time. More than 100 municipalities across Wisconsin saw nitrate levels in their water increase between 2003 and 2017. The city of Wapaka is one such municipality. Certainly with our system, it's been a burden for multiple years, a number of years, um, and it's been something that's been hard to get a hold of and to control. The city of Wapaka sources its drinking water from seven wells. When Justin Barron's first started working with the city, it was seeing nitrate levels of nine and a half parts per million, just under the maximum limit of 10. So it was thrust to the forefront of like, hey, I need to make sure we get this concentration down, we maintain this, we don't exceed the limits, because if we lose uh, a well or two, you know, obviously that's bad. We need to provide safe drinking water to the community. After making some improvements to the public water system, the city has been able to keep nitrate levels down below 10 parts per million. But Justin says they still have some issues staying below the maximum contaminant level. It's hard to quantify because we have, we have seven wells. 
you know, and we have two that have an issue, I would say. I mean, it's, it's our number one, I guess, concern as far as our water quality goes uh, here in Wapaka. It's, it's always something that we're thinking about because it's out of our control. Somebody else contaminated the water. We had to put out that much money and it's still a financial burden that we can't bring clean water into the house. It seems to be a problem that's happening to us, not one that we've caused.